Uh, my name is Shane Becker. My uh, handle in the channel, if any of you um, use that, is Shaners. My handle everywhere else is Vegan Straight Edge. My website is veganstraightedge.com. Uh, for those of you that'll, that are new, that'll be a sort of recurring theme. Here's my human name, here's my internet name, my URL, especially in any web uh, land. We like to use our URLs as identity. Um, I uh, drove up from LA um, over the past couple weeks and doing a, a sort of road trip along the west coast to here and camp in the Redwoods and things like that. Um, uh, Contact asked me to say a few things before he got going. Uh, I'm not doing a, a technical demo, uh, but I just wanted to say that this is the sixth IndieWeb camp, like Aaron said. I've been to all but last time. Um, I met Aaron and some other folks at the very first one for the first time. Um, and Tom Tech and I actually sort of became friends then, but we had met um, several years before in uh, 2005 at Matt Mullenweg's apartment at a WordPress 1.5. Somebody just checked in this form. Um, at a WordPress um, 1.5 upgrade party when WordPress was still small enough that Matt could say, anyone who wants to come to my apartment, here's my address, show up and I will upgrade your WordPress for you. And, and I did. Um, and I lived in San Francisco at the time and I didn't really like plug into like the tech community at all. I was kind of a little bit of a hermit at the time of my life. And um, I went there and I met Todd Tech and Eric Meyer and Molly.com and Matt Bullenweg and a bunch of other folks. And we have one photo of uh, both of both of us in the same place. We sort of met technically, but then didn't really become friends until years later. And now we're, we're great friends, and we have this great community. And I had the privilege and honor of introducing Contact Challenge. Thanks, James. So I'm just going to give a, a short uh, overview of the uh, state of the Indian web cat. So the Indie Web Cat has been now posting on our own site for over a year. So that's pretty awesome. I think this is the first full year that the Indie Web Cat has been posting on our own. It's pretty sweet. And as you can tell, the Indie Web Cat actually is pretty excited about this. <laughs> All right. So I'm Tatek Chalak. This is my website, Tatek.com. And throughout today and tomorrow, you're going to hear a lot of encouragement to just get up and show your website. So I'm starting first. This is my website. I built it. Uh, I've been posting on here by myself uh, uh, instead of Twitter since uh, 2010. So I feel like that's like how that happened six years. Uh, but it's doable. Everyone here can do it. And uh, if that's something you want to do this weekend, you can work on that. But I'll go back to what Shane was talking about, which is the first, very first new web camp uh, that we did here in Portland. 2011, and I actually see a lot of people here. Uh, Will was there, uh, Shane was there, Aaron was there. Am I your name, sir? Yeah. Ed. Ed was there. Anybody else? It's pretty awesome. Um, so you can all see from the photo. Uh, since then, we've held these main new webcams in uh, Portland once a year. This year, we said, you know what? This really is our summit. Let's do it like a summit. Let's call it a summit, and let's do uh, you know, proper production talks, like all the stuff, the cool stuff that we're doing, showing off and all that. So this is the state of the new web that I'm kicking you off with. Um, this is our website, or rather this was our website uh, until late last night, and this is our website now. So there's a couple of big changes here I want to point out. One is that we have a new logo that you might have seen on t-shirts, and that's thanks to Shane. Yeah. We took our first logo, who was drawn by uh, one of our co-founders, Crystal Beasley, talked to her about it, said, hey, I have some ideas for uh, doing a little uh, red logo. You mind if I do it? I have the files, that kind of thing. And Crystal was like, sure, go for it. Here you go. Um, and then Shane worked on it. And he said, he presented to the community. He said, what do you guys think? And he was like, well, that's like, that sort of kind of cool, but like, fix this and this and this. And, like, I got some ideas. Oh my gosh, designed by committee. But uh, Shane was awesome. He kept his wits amongst himself, amongst them, and like all the input was like cool. Let me try some revisions and kept revising and iterating. And then now we have uh, this amazing new logo, which I think looks super cool. And really appreciate that. Uh, 
change. He's, and he's contributed to the community. It's, it's, a, it's a great work, so we really appreciate that. Thanks again, Shane. The other big change you might notice is that uh, we kind of switched our wiki theme around a bit. We switched from a custom theme that has been doing a lot of hard work for us for many years to uh, the standard MediaWiki um, vector theme, I think it's called, uh, which is consistently updated with MediaWiki, which is a nice thing. And one of the things we're moving forward is we're going to keep this uh, up to date so that we can keep the MediaWiki installed up to date, all this kind of like nice, good admin type stuff that keeps the sort of community running smoothly. So that's, that's our new website, I just wanted to show that to you guys. Um, the key here I want to point out, and I'll zoom in a little bit here, is that uh, we started in 2011 um, with basically distinguishing ourselves as a community. So like almost all communities get started, it's like, well, what makes us different than anyone else? And the real distinguishing things were like three things that came out of the Federated Social Web Summit, or rather in reaction to, 2010 that uh, Aaron and I went to, which is one, show, don't tell. So as I showed you my website, so I'm telling you about it. Um, scratch your own itch. Make stuff that helps you. So start with like, how, what are the, my frustrations with my website, stuff online, personal identity, digital you know, archiving, whatever those itches are. Start with that and start solving those problems for yourself. And the third is, uh, when you solve those problems, like use them you, like, with solutions, use the stuff yourself publicly. We call that self dog fooding. So we kind of start with those three things. Um, you know, there's been some talks about like what makes it, what are the essential qualities of the community. And that's how it started. Show, don't tell, scratch your own itch, and self dog fooding. Now, we've actually evolved a bit since then, and we've kind of generalized to, you know what, we want to make this about um, uh, not just like owning your identity, own your stuff, but uh, our focus is like, this is, your content is yours. You are better connected because you get to choose where you want to connect to by making your content yours on your own domain. And you are in control. So you get to post any kind of thing you want. You get to style it how you want. Um, you can do whatever formats you want. You know, it's your site and you can choose to do that privately. You can choose to do it publicly. Uh, you can make your own permalinks that work and are no one's responsibility but your own. So, that's, uh, that's kind of a cool thing. Um, the reality is that all of this really starts, in my opinion, with one goal, which is self-empowerment. And that's, if I have to like say, what's Indie Web Camp about? That's what Indie Web Camp is about. So it's self-empowerment. Um, and that's the goal we all start with. I think as we achieve various different levels of that, like with our own websites, um, the hope is that, hey, we've, We've, uh, we've built a community, and so we want to spread empowerment. So we start with self-empowerment, get that going, uh, and then hopefully from there, spread empowerment. And I really see that as sort of like the general uh, specific instance of, you know, before you, if you're an idealist, before you go out there and save the world, you kind of have to save yourself. Learn how to take care of yourself, then go save the world. Um, and I think that's one of the things we try to do as a community. Uh, so that's, and that's important, because we're not just individuals that are doing self-empowerment. We are... Yes, we're working to empower ourselves. We're collaborating to empower each other. And that's like what we're doing this weekend. Um, and then we encourage everyone to openly share, to empower people that are beyond those that we know. And so by sharing your stuff publicly on the web, by sharing your stuff, your open source, uh, putting it in places like GitHub, uh, we empower those that we've never even met. And I think that's really powerful, too. So that's, I wanted to just give you guys a brief uh, overview of that. and. Uh, you can read our principles. I'm not going to go over all of them, but um, they kind of, they're all kind of helping uh, base those things. So, let's talk about milestones for this past year. Uh, we've had a lot of awesome posts. You can see more and more people are talking about how they've either found the community or they've figured out how to own their data or own their identity or owning their photos, owning their audio bits, all this kind of stuff. And I think that's really awesome. Like, Empower yourself and talk about it, show it, you know, blog, blog about it. And we like to highlight folks that are doing that. And there's been a lot of uh, good, positive posts like that once in a while. Um, however, there's, you know, occasional unfortunate rants like, uh, I'm just going to like click on this one here, um, anywhere but medium. Uh, but um, 
Okay, so uh, fortunately this site actually depends on JavaScript to view the content, and I have that turned off by default, so you don't actually get to see the rant. <laughs> so, uh, but I'll just leave, I'll just leave on that. Um, we focus on building ourselves up uh, more than tearing us uh, down, and so let me just leave you with: uh, don't hate, go create. I think that's that's kind of like an important principle in our community. If you find yourself like wanting to rant about something, oh my gosh, I find that all the time. Uh, I'm like, wait. What am I like instead? What's what am I like actually frustrated with? Let me see if I can go build something, and then like post some minor update. Like, oh look, I like changed my CSS. Um, I think a minor update to your own site is like way better than like a long screed about you know I don't know being oppressed by some silo that is free <laughs> and like you can just choose not to use it. Um, but enough on that. Uh, we have done a lot of awesome technology developments in the last year. Uh, and the first one of those I want to highlight is uh, a bunch of members in the community have uh, contributed to or have worked with the W3C uh, to take some of the standards and specifications and like protocols and formats that we've kind of incubated, we've kind of dog fooded ourselves, try to make things work, uh, and taken them through uh, like a formal standardization process, which involves a lot more work uh, to get lots of details right. And the uh, one of the most recent um, results of that is WebMention, uh, developed in this community, um, has become a W3C candidate recommendation, which is a huge milestone. And I just want to congratulate Aaron on that work, because that's, that's a lot of work. <laughs> what this means is W3C has now broadcast this candidate recommendation saying, hey, everyone in the world doing like web development, we invite you to implement this and submit us your implementation reports. So that's something I want to encourage all of you to do as well, is we've got a lot of implementations of WebMention. Um, there's a validator, webmention.rocks. It's linked right from the spec. Uh, you can go through the validator, check uh, your test suite, and check all the different interactions that you do, build that into an implementation report, and submit it. And that's how the standard makes progress, is through implementation reports and feedback. So I'm just, that's one small encouragement there. Uh, that's the that's the most advanced uh, spec we've got like that, but not the only one. Um, Aaron's also worked on and contributed a uh, micropub specification, which is the W3C working draft, which is the phase before candidate recommendation where people are iterating on it, getting feedback, or adding features with leading features. So this is also a great uh, big accomplishment. And especially in the last year, it's gone from uh, being kind of like a simple way to like maybe create a post on a site to like now you can create, delete, undelete, read or update uh, posts on sites. And I think we have like at least two implementations and all that. Yeah. So that's pretty cool. Um, there's others along, coming along the way, like uh, post type discovery. It's an editor's draft. Um, but it's got like, you know, a really lazy editor that hasn't managed to actually produce a working draft yet, so we got to get on this case about that. <laughs> all right. There's other technologies that have made uh, good iterations in the new webcam community. Which we haven't like think through anything um, answer of standardization yet, but people are working on getting working across sites. One is cell mentions, and this is something that we've got a bunch more implementations. Uh, since last year, uh, there was implementation of a uh, challenge called SWAT Zero. How many are familiar with SWAT Zero? Social Web Asset Test Zero is what it sounds stands for. So we actually got that working last year, and I'll talk about that a little more later. That uses cell mention, so a bunch more people have gotten cell mentions working. We've iterated on a bunch. Uh, the other one I want to bring up is Vouch, and I'll uh, talk about the reasons for it, why it's becoming more and more important real soon now. This is a way of uh, vouching for a web mention, or finding a way to get someone to vouch for your web mention. So if you're sending a web mention to someone, uh, commenting on someone's blog that you've never met them before, uh, and you want to say, hey, I'm not a spammer. Uh, you know, you can you can accept my post because we have this you know we have this link in common or this friend in common or some other form of saying this other entity vouches for me. That's that's a summary there, and I think this is going to become more and more important uh, in the next year. So that's um, those are like the big technologies, and there's been a lot more uh, building blocks uh, that have been built out. But there's one example that I want to call out that we've made uh, a bunch of progress with in the last year. Uh, which is uh, person tagging. Uh, this was something we had kind of figured out 
mostly figured out but not really implemented until the SWOT zero test last year, which involves tagging someone in a photo. So we figured out how to do that. We got implementation of that. But the big example uh, thing that we figured out in the past year is that we figured out how to posse person tags um, across uh, you know, to, to different uh, social media silos and such. And so uh, there's a service called uh, Richie that uh, you can publish on your own site and then to syndicate to other sites, you know, like Twitter or Facebook or Flickr, you can basically send Bridget a web mention as a way of saying, hey, can you please like, post a copy of this for me? Because I don't want to deal with like calling their proprietary API. Really handy. Um, so Bridget does that. It started with just text. It added articles, it added photos, it added videos. And now, it's most recently last year, added the ability to take person tags from like a photo on your site to the copy that's on another site. So instead of just telling you about that, why don't I show you an example of that? Let's see. Here, here is a photo that I posted last week, or actually this this past week, of Homebrew Website Club San Francisco. And you can see there at the bottom it says with, and then a bunch of uh, person tags. Uh, I'm using this kind of linking to their personal site format, and then in parentheses their Facebook or Twitter. They've got that. But there's seven people that I've tagged in that photo, and Let's see. Let's see. This is the this is the Twitter copy, which I don't know if it'll actually load. I'm having trouble actually loading Twitter today, ironically. One of the things that actually got me to. Uh, well, I've already approved this account, so it should be sure. I've. Uh, what's that? We could try that. How about we use that account? Uh, of course, I log in and, and it kind of loses my space. It's kind of like, don't do that, right? That's work. Here we go. Okay. There's the posse copy on Twitter. Um, there's no person tags there because Twitter doesn't have an API to let you set the person tags in a photo yet. So we're waiting on that. Uh, here's the copy on Flickr. And here's the copy on Facebook where all seven of the person tags I made made it across, and that happened automatically thanks to Bridget. So literally, I did not post this photo, I, I did not do any user interactions to uh, make this photo appear on Facebook or add these tags. Uh, Bridget did 100% of that for me, and it, it actually was able to tag 100% of the people that I tagged in the photo on Facebook. So that's pretty awesome. So that's the kind of cool building blocks we've been uh, improving on and iterating and just getting to the point where, yeah, I can post from my site. I don't need to worry about the copy on silos as much um, because Bridgie will take care of that for me. And then all my friends that happen to use those other social media sites, I don't need to talk to them to like, oh, go read my site. I can say, yeah, you know, you use Facebook, great. Just keep, keep reading stuff there. You'll see my stuff there. That's fine. So those are some of the technology that's made progress within the last year. The, um, so how about some numbers? We have done a ton of indie web camps last year, uh, starting with in the past year. Like we just completed uh, Dusseldorf, which was the second one in Dusseldorf. Nuremberg, the first one, first indie web camp in Nuremberg, we did in April. Uh, MIT, we've done a bunch there. Uh, New York City, we've done a bunch there. You know, we did San Francisco, MIT. In the last year, we had the first indie web camp in Edinburgh, um, which was organized and run by Amy. Amy, which we're very happy to have here with us today. Thanks, Amy. Um, so it just goes to show that, like, and there's, there's last year's, which you probably recognize a lot of people there. Uh, there's a lot of new web camps. We had some new ones. We hope to have some new ones this year, too. We've also had a bunch of new Homebrew Website Club meetups. So the San Francisco and Portland ones have been going great. Washington, D.C. started up. Uh, Brighton's been going well. Um, Los Angeles started up as well, and that's going to continue uh, starting in July, which is pretty cool. Uh, there's a couple in Sweden that have been going great. Nuremberg just started last week and had a pretty had a great attendance, and they're doing this one, another one next week. So the number of cities has grown. We're pretty happy about that, too. So that brings me to the fact that we have finally broken a 1,000 users on the wiki, which is kind of amazing. There are a thousand, over a 1,000 people that have logged into the wiki with their own domain name. Which I think is, a, is an awesome uh, 
high watermark for uh, India off, for owning your identity. And I think that deserves to be recognized. So thanks everyone who's put a lot of hard work into that, especially Aaron, again, indiaoth.com. Um, we've tried to keep making it easier and easier, and I think the numbers are gonna just keep growing. So that's that's pretty cool. Yeah, if you click on next 1,000, let's see what it, let's see what it shows here. Yeah, I kind of hacked the media query, the media wiki query page too. I'll look at that. It starts at T and it goes down to lots of www's, as you might expect. Z. Zen.com. Okay. And so the next milestone I want to point out is that we have actually, and I just got this confirmed from uh, Ben Wirtmuller, uh, there are over there are tens of thousands of indie websites. And what I mean by that is not just like sites where people have their own URL, control their own identity, which is a great measure of independence, and I think we should all encourage that, but tens of thousands of sites that are actually actively deploying and supporting indie web building blocks. Like they support microformats, they support web mentions, um, out of the box. And that's kind of amazing. And a lot of that is like, the huge vast majority of that is due to uh, known and the with known um, service, so that's something that Ben Wirtmuller and uh, Aaron Joe Ritchie built and created, and it kind of started just three years ago, uh, and I'm not going to give away much more story about than that, but I'm really glad that Ben is here again this year uh, to talk about you know, what he's done, how we've gone from you know five years ago, I think last year we were in the thousands of sites, and now we're in tens of thousands of sites, and so this, this also brings together, remember that uh, technology I talked about, Vouch? I would say that at this point we're kind of at like DEFCON 3 for like where we're going to get some like massive spam attack on, on web mentions, which is going to really, it really kind of raises the importance of looking at Vouch, implementing Vouch, uh, making sure that we think it works in like the positive cases at least to get comments and stuff back and forth, um, and also to sort of block all the automated uh, spam type stuff as well. So success is great, but it also brings new challenges. So this is kind of where we're at, and I feel like if we continue on this trend of sort of like 10xing the number of indie websites per year, uh, it's going to happen real soon. So that's something to be proud of and to be uh, to be keeping in mind. So the last thing I want to show you guys is what we finished um, at the end of last year's new webcam. Uh, how many people were here last year? Wow, we got a lot of new folks this year. Okay, cool. Um, this is the uh, SWAT Zero demo, and I'm just going like, to play this for you guys because I think it kind of speaks well to itself. Let's see if we have audio or not. We'll find out soon. Isn't it? Oh, 
So now if I go back to the computer, and refresh, there they are. Sweet. So the reader would They had signed into Woodwind. This is what they saw on in their video of this post. And that is a fully functioning demo of SWAT Zero across three different implementations. Three different locations. Yeah. Three people, three locations, three personal sites, three implementations. So I think SWAT Zero is pretty awesome. If you want to get your sites and working on SWAT Zero uh, as one of the players like that, I think that'd be a great goal this weekend. You don't necessarily have to do that. I think the key thing for this weekend, if I could summarize, would be make something, anything, like for yourself, for your own site. Whatever that is, nothing is too small. Um, try to meet somebody that you don't know. A lot of new folks this year, I think that's a, it's a good encouragement. Meet someone you don't know. Um, people got name tags for the most part. It should be pretty easy. Uh, help somebody out. So one of the reasons we're a community is because we have different levels of expertise in different things, whether it's like, engineering development, different languages or frameworks, whether it's design, uh, visual design, even like copy editing. There are people that are really good at writing small bits of text, which is sometimes one of the hardest tasks. Uh, there's a, this is a really diverse community in that regard, diverse skills. Meet, when you meet people, find out what they can help you with, what you can help them with, help someone out. Um, and then lastly, like show something. And, and this is where I really want to emphasize, uh, don't let the pursuit uh, of perfection stop you from making progress. It's, it's really easy to think, oh, I have to get things just right before I show them. Because I don't want to, these are my peers, I gotta be proud of what I do. I don't want to like have it be off by a pixel. Like, don't worry about it. Like get something working, make some progress. Uh, don't let the the goal of perfection like stop you from doing that. And then and then show it and then iterate. Because we're all iterating here. And that's that's uh, as you can see, even the wiki itself, that with the new theme and all that, like that's something that we can use some iteration on. So, dream something up, make something, and share it. And that's the State of IndieWeb 2016. Thanks.